All right, everybody, so welcome to uh, PI 101. In this class, you're going to be learning about what PI is, which uh, stands for Planetary Interaction, how to do it, what sort of money you can expect to make, uh, its other uses, like for industry, and we're going to also set up a practice planet here in GE uh, to get you started. So we'll start off with some general information about PI. Basically, it's just setting up an industrial style base on a planet in any system. Uh, you can do PI on any planet in any system, um, but you usually want to try to plan it out a bit to extract the resource that you're looking for to build something else. Um, it costs very little to start doing PI. You'll need to train a couple skills up to maybe two or three to get an introductory planets uh, and a, like a nice little production scheme. And then the command centers themselves are free from dojo and upgrading all the stuff and building buildings won't cost you more than a couple million ISK per planet. So it's, a very, it's very cheap to get started and it can give you some nice side income. Uh, it is important to note that PI is not really a primary source of income per se. It's not like ratting or exploring or mining where you just make money as long as you know, you're doing it and you can make more money by just doing it for more time. With PI, it's kind of like a set amount of money per period of time. Uh, like staring at your planet's factories won't make them produce faster. So PI is more of a side job, but I find it to be a very worthwhile side job. You can put it on any character and it like my scheme, I collect from my planets every two days, so it takes me about 20 minutes every two days, and it's a nice sort of steady side income. Um, so you've probably noticed, you know, in every system, all the different planets, but never really paid attention to them because they're not important to PvP or any other aspect of the game. Um, PI is, of course, all done on planets. And there's different types of planets, like there's barren planets, gas planets, storm, ice, magma, whatever. Each, uh, each planet's going to have a different resource. Uh, actually, five different resources. So uh, some resources you can only get off of certain planets. So the planet type that you choose to set up your base on is going to be very important. I'm going to link something in fleet here. I want everybody to go to that link. This is kind of a nice little tool for PI. Uh, it'll show you all the different levels of resources. On the very left is the planets that you harvest from. And if you hover over it, it'll show you which basic resources are you know, harvested from each planet. And then what those basic resources can be built into and what those level two resources can be built into and so on. And there's four or five total levels of production. So when you first start off and set up an extractor on a planet, it's going to harvest P0 is what it's referred to, or just uh, raw resources. So if you look at gas, for example, click on the gas planet, you can see that you can harvest noble gas from a gas planet. And then you can use a factory to refine the noble gas into oxygen. And the oxygen can then be combined with other P1s to make uh, certain P2s. And then those P2s can be combined with other P2s to make P3s. Uh, so, you know, it's, there's a lot of different things you can make with each raw resource. But also note that with every level that you go up, it takes, you know, an exponentially larger amount of resources to make. Like a P0 just needs an extractor. A P1 just needs one refiner. But a P2, you need two extractors and two refiners because you need two different resources. And then a P3 will take two P2s, so it's going to take four basic extractors. And a P4 obviously is just twice uh, as complicated again. Um, all this refining and combining can, is done on the planets as well. And we'll talk more about this later, but you'll kind of have to choose whether you want a planet to be you know, specialized in harvesting or specialized in, in combining stuff. Um, because making a, making a hybrid planet for anything higher than P2 is going to be very inefficient. 
let's see, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this page. So you can leave that page open or bookmark it, definitely uh, keep that around. Everybody, do you have your gas command centers in your ship's cargo hold right now? Cool. Uh, I guess I should ask, actually, does anyone not have that? All right, so everybody go ahead and undock and then immediately stop your ship. Make sure you have the command center in your cargo bay. Just undock and stop. Is it just JJ and Leopold that are going to set up command centers? Oh, no, I mean, oh, I, I did forget to mention this. PI is totally instanced. So you setting up a base on a planet does not diminish the resources available to anyone else. Like these planets in GE probably have thousands of PI setups from different players on them. Oh, I see, I see what you mean. Okay, no worries. You can do it if you want to. Command centers are pretty cheap. Uh, but yeah, if you don't want to, that's fine. So uh, then JJ and Leopold, right click somewhere in space, go to planets, planet three, and click view planetary production. And that should pull up kind of a, like a view of the planet itself. Now the one that we're gonna harvest, the resource that we're gonna try to harvest today is noble gas. And then we'll also be building a refinery to refine the noble gas into oxygen. So the first thing you're going to want to do, uh, you, sh you should have the remote sensing skill. So in the top left under the planet name, go to scan instead of build. Go to the scan tab. And then click noble gas. It's the second one from the bottom. You should see a bunch of colors pop up on the planet. And then there's a sort of color gradient under the scan button and there's like sliders on the left and right side of the color gradient. So move the whole, move the whole rainbow thing all the way to the left and then, oh uh, yeah, and then in the top left, do you see like a, a bunch of buttons like build, scan? Yeah, so go to scan and then drag the drag the little rainbow all the way to the left and then click drag the little arrow on the right side of the rainbow gradient drag that to the right until you only see a couple white spots on the planet uh, so yeah click noble gas and then drag the little arrow on the right side of the rainbow. Drag it to the right until you only see a couple white spots. Yeah, Dread, just uh, the white spots will be inside red spots. Cool, so this is what your scanners are telling you is like how the resources are located on this planet. The white spots are gonna be the most dense resources and then, you know, red, orange, yellow, green. So you're going to want to set up your extractor heads on the white spots. To start off, uh, find one of the white spots and sort of zoom in a bit. And then go back to the build tab in the top left and choose gas command center. And then place it near the white spot. You don't have to place it on it and it would actually be bad to place it directly on it. So just place it somewhere nearby. Once you've done that, go ahead and click Submit in the top left. And that should build your command center. 
Uh, then you'll notice there's a bunch of other different buildings that you can now build. Uh, and I'll go through and explain each one. So beside the command center, there's an extractor control unit. This is kind of like a, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's the, it's the building that sends out the drills that refine resources. So that's the one that harvests the resource itself. There's a basic industry facility, and that will refine the raw resources into P1. Then there's a advanced industry, which refines P1s into 2s or 2s into 3s. There's a storage facility, which just stores stuff. And there's a launch pad, which is the thing that lets you actually launch the goods that you produce into space or import goods for production. So we're going to start off with the extractor. Uh, go ahead and build an extractor control unit at the edge of the white spot. Uh, make sure you still have noble gas selected so you can see the white spots and build the extract control unit at the edge. Um, the extractor control unit. Okay. Uh, yeah, and while you're building the extractor control unit, you should see like a black or a gray sort of circle around the, the building that you're building. That is the range that you can extract from. So yeah, just make sure that it, you know, covers as much of the white spot as possible and also, you know, a decent amount of the other red spot. Then build that one, place it down, and click Confirm or Submit. Now we want to actually tell the extractor control unit to you know, set, set out some drills and start extracting. So click on the extractor control unit, and you should see a little menu pop up. Click on the button on the very left side of that row of buttons, Install Extraction Program. And there's a lot of stuff on this screen, so I'm going to go through each part. On the left, there's 10 dots. Those are the extraction heads, or like the drills themselves. You can activate up to 10 if you have enough power grid for it. But for now, just click the first one to activate it. So you should have one active uh, extraction head. The middle graph shows how much of a resource you're expected to be able to extract uh, over time. And then the right side is where you kind of choose the settings. So under selected resource in the top right, choose noble gas. It's the second from the last one. And then set your timer. If it's not already set to the minimum time, set it to the minimum time. Then on the extractor control unit, drag the, drag the, uh, control, uh, the extractor head that was just created. It should be like a, a dot inside a circle that's connected to your control unit by a line. Drag that dot so the sphere entirely is in the white zone. You should see that as you drag it around, the expected you know, resource extraction amount changes, and you just want to set that to the highest value. Once you found a good spot for it, uh, leave that there, and then click Start Extraction in the bottom right of the Extractor Control Unit window. And then click Submit again on the planet in the top left. Anyone have any trouble? Cool. Alright, so that's the extractor. It's going to now start extracting resources. Extractors will go through one cycle every 30 minutes. So I think if the minimum period was one hour, it's going to do two cycles. Uh, so next, we want to give the mineral somewhere to go. So go back to the build page and click storage, uh, gas storage facility. So click that and then place it right next to the extractor head, like as close as you can get it, or the extractor unit. The reason that you want to place it as close as possible is that you're going to have to build a link between the extractor and the storage facility, and long links cost you more power. So you
Yeah, the control unit, like the actual building that you built, that's the thing that you build the storage close to. The, the extractor heads themselves don't, it doesn't matter. So once you've placed the storage facility right next to the extract control unit, uh, right click the storage facility and click create link. And then click the extractor control unit to link the two structures. You should see like a, a moving blue dotted line between them. And then click Submit in the top left again to create the link. No, so it's, it's very dependent on what you want your planet to do. Um, Theoretically, it's possible to not have either one and do everything through your command center. Like your command center can actually, uh, your command center can launch things and it can store things, but a very small amount. Uh, so in any actual real setup, you're going to want at least a launch pad. If you check it frequently enough that you're sure that you'll have enough space, you can go without the stored facility. But I like to set one up just to, just to be you know, safer. So I guess the answer is, it's up to you. Uh, so, so we've got the stored facility down. And now, so now we've created a link between the two structures. So we have to tell the, tell the control unit where to send the minerals. So click the extractor again. And then click the second button, it should be products. This will show you all the things that this building produces and you should see some amount of noble gas and it should say not routed. So click that noble gas and then click create route at the bottom of the window and select the storage facility and then confirm it. You guys good? Then uh, submit the changes again in the top left. And now your extractor control unit is going to harvest the resources and move them all to the storage facility as they're harvested. So that's P0. You've now set up a P0 uh, planet, but P0 resources are really not very useful. You can't actually use them to build anything. You have to refine them to at least P1. So next we're gonna set up a refinery. Go back to the build menu and build a gas basic industry facility somewhere right next to the storage facility, as close as possible again. And then as before, right click and create a link to the storage facility and then submit those changes. Uh, oh, the, if you hover over a link, it'll show you percentage, and that means how, like how stressed that link is. Uh, links have a certain capacity uh, that they can transport. So if you're trying to transport too much stuff per hour over a link, it won't it won't work. You'll have to upgrade the link, but you shouldn't have to worry about that right now. Uh, so once you have that building placed and linked to the storage facility. Now we need to sort of give it some instructions. So click the basic industry facility and then click the first button, schematics. Here you can choose what you want to build. So scroll down to oxygen, click oxygen and then click install. So now the, now the facility knows that it wants to make oxygen, but it doesn't know where to get the resources from and it doesn't know where to put the finished product. So Go back to the storage facility, click that, and then click the second from the right button. It's three arrows, it's called routes. This button will show you all of the planned routes uh, incoming and outgoing for this facility. 
So you should see a bunch of noble gas incoming. So for incoming resources, you can click it and then click create route. And then select the basic industry facility. That will tell it to uh, use these incoming resources to, you know, to build the stuff that this industry facility wants to make. And then click submit again. And you should see that the industry facility is starting to make some products, but it still doesn't yet know where to actually put the finished products. So go back to the industry facility again and click products, the second button, and click the oxygen and create a route for that back to the storage facility. Once you're done with that, then this P1 setup is done. Uh, you're harvesting resources from the extractor, moving it to the storage facility, and then the industry facility pulls the resources, refines it, and sends the oxygen, which is the P1, back to the storage facility. And so yeah, that's your basic P1 planet. From here on, if you want to upgrade, uh, you pretty much just add more extractor heads to extract more resources and add more industry facilities to refine the products faster. Uh, you can you want to kind of balance it out so you know if you notice that there's a lot more incoming raw resources than you have the capability to refine just build more factories and vice versa. There is also you know more advanced planets you can do like if you want to make a P2 planet then you have to find a planet that uh, produces both of the resources that you need for that P2 and then build one extractor for each type of resource. You know, you have to build basic industry facilities to refine each type. And then you would build a, an advanced industry facility to combine the P1s into P2s. But we're not going to do that right now because uh, adding that many stuff onto your command center requires that you have an upgraded command center. Uh, because, actually I'll go over that real quick. So click on your command center, the original building you placed down, and you should see CPU and power and upgrade level on the right side of the menu that pops up. These are kind of like ships in the sense that, you know, it only produces so much CPU and power and every building, link, or extractor head you place down costs power and CPU. So upgrading your command center will allow you to place more stuff. And the way to upgrade your command center is by training up the skill command center upgrades. And then you go and click your command center and click the left button on the menu. It should say upgrade. And you can upgrade it to the maximum level of your skill that allows. At uh, level zero, I don't think you can upgrade enough to support a P2 planet. So that's why we're not doing one today. But there is one final step uh, in PI, which is of course, actually getting the resources that you've produced off the planet. They're all in your storage facility, but you need to uh, actually launch them up. So go back to the build menu and build a gas launch pad adjacent to the storage facility. And then as before, link them together. And then once you're done submitting that, go back to your storage facility and go to the... Oh, I guess actually at level, if you don't have the upgrades, you can't actually place a launch pad. So, hmm. Yeah, uh, if you want to do PI then, that, that should be the first thing you level. Uh, command Center Upgrades, I'll link the skill here. Great, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've linked it there. Um, each level just lets you upgrade the, the Command Center one more up. But basically what you would do is just, you know, you place it down, link it to the storage facility, and then in the storage facility, you would go to the routes, Again, select the incoming refined oxygen and tell it to move it to the launch pad. 
Um, let's actually Yeah, so the launch pad, once you move stuff into the launch pad, then you actually go from there and launch it to your uh, POCO, the, what's it called, the customs office. And once you launch things, you have to pay a small tax. Uh, it's, it's like really small, like 5%, I think, or less of the value of the stuff you're launching. So you don't really need to worry too much about that cost. Um, but you launch it up to the the customs office, and then from there you can access the customs office and move it into your ship. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mention that there is actually another way to get stuff off the planet, which is to have them have the planet put it in a cargo container and launch that into space. And then you have to warp there and pick it up. But uh, yeah, that's got its risks. So if you're doing it in like relatively friendly space, there's no reason not to just do it from the command center or from the cousin's office. Let's see. So, uh, so yeah, so that's the P1 planet fully set up. This planet now, as long as you have the extractor running, it's going to extract stuff and refine it to P1 and send it to the launch pad uh, ready for you to collect. If uh, So actually if, if you don't check it in time it won't be full, It'll rather, it would rather be empty uh, because the thing that you need to do periodically is to restart your extractor control unit. Like it was only set to one hour so after one hour if you don't restart it it just won't harvest any more raw stuff so there's no more raw stuff to refine. If you set it for a long time and then it fills up your storage facility, which might be what you were talking about, then it just won't be able to put anything else in. It'll just stop until there's free space. So you definitely want to make sure you have enough space, but that probably, that usually won't be a problem uh, for the stuff that we're going to be, that you normally make. I did forget to mention also that, uh, I mean, you, you might be thinking if, if I can set it for as long as I want to, why not just set it for the maximum value and let it run? Well, the more, the more time you have it run for, the less effective it is. So at, if you set it for one hour, it might make 10,000 per hour. If you set it for two hours, it might make 9,000 per hour and so on. So the total will still be higher, but the, per hour efficiency will be a lot lower. Uh, someone did some math sometime and calculated that a very good time to set it for is two days and one hour. So that's what I set mine to. It, I don't really have to check it very often and you know it produces a nice amount, enough to fuel all my industry factories. Sure. Yeah, I mean, of course, refining it into higher levels will make you more, but you could also just sell that uh, P1 stuff. I'm not entirely sure if there's a large market for it in catch. Uh, I think because P2 is so easy to make that most people, if they do sell anything, it would be selling P2. So, yeah, that would, I guess it's kind of, you would have to check. Um... Also, the other option is to make stuff for yourself. Like, I have all my characters working on making PI stuff to build stuff on my industry too. So I only extract the stuff I need and stuff like that. So it's really, it's really up to you. You could, uh, you could uh, harvest resources and sell them. You could harvest them, refine them to whatever level you want and then sell them. Or you can harvest, refine, and build it yourself up to you. As for profit, 
I don't think selling P1 is very profitable. P2 maybe. Yeah. Yeah, um, all the jump gates and all the buildings require liquid ozone. So if you produce that, I'm sure, you know, the corporation would appreciate it. You you, sh you should always be able to find a seller for that. I mean, a buyer for that. Uh, same goes for fuel blocks because those are used to power structures. I actually am not too familiar with how structures are fueled. Uh, I'm sure there's people who know those, so you can try asking in Standing or Dojo. But yeah, fuel blocks and ozone should always be welcome products. Actually, liquid ozone's not on here. Let me check how it's made. Wait, no. Sorry, I lied. Liquid ozone is made from refining ice, not PI. So liquid ozone is not related to PI. It was fuel blocks that's related to PI. Oh, ozone's from mining, yeah. Uh, so for fuel blocks, yeah, like if you look at, for example, a hydrogen fuel block, which I'll link in fleet, that's made through industry, but it needs PI resources to make. A lot of them, actually. Holy crap. Yeah. Uh, it looks like, actually, a lot of this stuff is not just PI, either. Like, liquid ozone's from mining. I think heavy water's from mining. Isotopes and strontium are also not from PI. But, uh, for example, like oxygen, mechanical parts, enriched uranium, and coolant, I think those are all PI products. And robotics. Yeah, so if you're wanting to make fuel blocks completely by yourself, without buying raw resources from anyone, it looks like you'll have to have quite a few different like uh, harvesting tunes. Uh, let's see, there is, earlier I mentioned that you can make a P2 planet by just, you know, upgrading your power core enough that you can place down multiple extractors to do different resources and stuff. Uh, but there is also a way to do, uh, to refine to P2, but you just need another planet to do it. So I'm going to link my spreadsheet real quick. All right, let me find this. All right, so I've put it in, in fleet there. That's the spreadsheet that I use to manage my PI. And it's, I mean, you don't have to do this. I just did this so it's easier to keep track of stuff. But for what I was talking about a second ago with uh, using two planets to make a P2. The gist of it is that you harvest resource A from planet 1, harvest resource B from planet 2, and then you export the resources from planet 1 to planet 2. So now planet 2 you have both of the raw resources you need and uh, you didn't have to waste power putting down that extractor control unit because those cost a lot of power. Then on planet 2 you have the factory that actually combines them together. You can see also on my spreadsheet that I have this 
uh, doing across three tunes. Right now I'm making Nanite Paste, and this is, you pretty much have to have three characters to make it unless you level up uh, your PI skills to max on two characters. Yeah, Dread, you have to uh you have to move the things yourself. Like you launch them from the launch pad, collect it in the ship, move to the other command or the customs office, deposit them, launch it back down. So it can it can be a pain. Some people prefer to just have P2 planets where they have both extractors and both types of refiners and it combines it on site which is a lot easier because you don't have to manually move any resources, but it will also be a, like a bit less efficient, actually quite a lot less efficient. Uh, once you get a lot of you know, different types of uh, harvesters, it'll also be worth it to start making factory planets. So if you look back at the spreadsheet under Dojo at the bottom, Look at, uh, for example, GE7. On that planet, I'm not actually harvesting anything. Not P0, I'm not refining anything into P1. All I'm doing is importing the P2s from my other planets and combining those into P3s and exporting that. So on that planet, all I have is my command center, a launch pad, and a bunch of advanced industry facilities. That's referred to as a factory planet, and, you know, they're... At a certain point, there, it's going to be more worth it to have planets like that instead of having the factory on site. Yeah. Yeah, P3 is definitely impossible to make on a single planet, so you have to do some moving around yourself. And then, you know, factories, planets are a bit more efficient if you set it up correctly. That's uh that's pretty much it uh, for this class. You know, you set up a basic P1. From here on, if you want to upgrade, just level up your skills, upgrade your uh, command center, and you can place more extractor heads, more refiners. You can try making a P2 planet where it produces P2 by itself. And then just uh, collect it every so often from the customs office. Does anyone have any questions about anything? Cool. A um, couple other things. You don't have to do it all in the same system. Like. There's a lot of stuff that's doable within just GE, but GE also, I think, doesn't have any storm or lava planets. Oh, it does. Wait. It doesn't have any oceanic planets. So if you want something from an oceanic planet, like biomass, which doesn't spawn on any other planet, you have to go to a planet, a system with that planet in it. Uh, for me, I use Echo 3 because we've got the jump bridge, so it's effectively one jump away. But you can spread your PI scheme across different systems, but then moving stuff around will be kind of a pain. So I would definitely recommend trying to keep stuff in one system. Also, when you collect PI stuff, you're in an epithal, which is literally only used for PI. So it makes you a very juicy target, because epithals have no ability to fight. And if someone sees you in an epithal, they know you're doing PI, and they will try to hunt you. So if you're sitting on a customs office at some planet, you know, for more than a couple seconds, I would say, watch your D-scan or be aligned out or something. Don't just sit there forever. I have had numerous, numerous people try to gank me at, uh, while I'm doing PI. Sometimes they succeed. Yeah. The problem with cloak, though, is that you can't cloak if you're too close to the POCO. And if you're too far from the POCO, you can't access it. Uh, so on your epithals, I'll actually share my fit here real quick. 
are linked in fleet. It's a pretty standard, like, industrial sort of fit. Hyperspatial rigs to make it warp faster. Uh, initial stabilizers to make it align faster. But then I've got a burst jammer in the mids, so that if something does come tackle me, I have a chance to jam it off and escape. And then I have some, you know, uh, shield hardeners and a prop mod. Of course, you could literally fly an unmodded epithal if you want. It'll be perfectly fine for PI. I just did this so I can get some more survivability. I think that is about everything. Oh yeah, other skills. Um, I'll explain them really briefly. So go to your skill page and go to planet management. It's in the bottom right-ish. There's only five skills related to PI. Uh, Interplanet consolidation just lets you have more planets. Command center upgrades lets you upgrade your command centers to higher power levels. Uh, planetology allows you to see the resource scan, like the color gradients, a little bit better. Remote sensing allows you to, well, see it at all. You have to have it at least level one. Once you level up further past level one, it lets you scan planets from other systems near you, which honestly is not really that useful. Uh, and then advanced planetology is I actually don't exactly know what it does, but it also helps you find a better point to put your extractor heads to extract more resources. Yeah, so with that, I think that's pretty much everything I was planning to cover here. So, any last questions? No, so all PI stuff is totally instanced. Your setup uh, does not in any way affect anyone else's, no one can see yours. No one can do anything else to yours setup. Uh, sorry, can you say it again? Oh, yes. So go to the Neocom in the top left. I think it's, yeah, industry and then planetary production. And that will pull up, actually, yeah, I forgot to mention